Water is life. You cannot do anything without water. Water is important at whichever level. Uh, water is important for household use. Water is important for farming. Um, water is important for for industrial activities. You know, any social economic development of any community, be it a country, hinges on the provision of water. So that is how cardinal water is. It is reported that many people die every year, the majority of them being children from diseases associated with inadequate water supply and sanitation. The United Nations General Assembly Resolution 64292 of 2010 is thus in recognition and acknowledgement that clean drinking water and sanitation are essential to the realization of human decency. In Zambia, the Water Resources Management Act No. 21 of 2011 sees the establishment of the Water Resources Management Authority, whose mandate is to provide for the management, development, protection and preservation of water resources and their ecosystems. The statutory body has therefore developed regulations and guidelines governing the sinking of boreholes through statutory instrument number 18, 19 and 20 of 2018, which include abstraction permits, licensing and fees. This offers an indication that management and development of water resources in Zambia remains the government's priority and concern in accordance with the National Vision 2030 of Clean and Self Water Supply and Sanitation for All by 2030. As you know, the government of the day, under the able leadership of His Excellency the President, Mr. Edgar Chawanungu, is working around the clock to make sure that uh, all the districts around Zambia acquire clean drinking water. We need a, a society where our children, where our mothers can be able to access water uh, very easily. Like what the Bible says, wherever water is, there is the presence of God. And for anything, for man to survive, for any living thing to survive, they need water. Plants, anything, human beings, animals, they need water. So, water is so essential that we cannot do without it. And we need that clean water. 70% of our, our, our bodies are made out of water. So, it's not a commodity that you can have a substitute for it, you know. You can only change it where you are getting it. You know, you can either get it from the river, you can get it from the tap, you know, all those. But in the nutshell, you need, you need water. So basically, I think for things to start rolling, for wheels to start turning in terms of development, you need very, very, you need water. Not only water, but you need very reliable, you know, because reliability also plays a very, very, very important role because that's what determines how people can be able to plan. Clean and safe drinking water therefore remains a prime aspect of decent life anywhere in the world. Governments globally are placing provision of self water to citizens as a fundamental component of their social economic development agenda. This blends well with the UN Sustainable Development Goal number six of ensuring access to water and sanitation for all. The target not only looks into issues pertaining to drinking water, sanitation and hygiene, but also the quality and sustainability of water resources across the world. It is true that every Zambian wants to access self-water for domestic, industrial or commercial use. However, not every citizen has the same capacity or opportunity to access the commodity with discernible differences noted between the demands for water in urban areas and rural areas.
In Masaiti district in Copa Belt province, for instance, people have had to go to great lengths to access water, let alone quality water, which they mainly use in their households. The problem we face here is water. We suffer a lot. We even sleep right here at the stream all night until morning. That is when we go home with our children. Where I stay, there is no water. When it's October in the hot season, it's even worse because boreholes and taps are only found here at the shelter. This is where we come, but it's very far from my village. Almost 90% of the district is a rural, where there are villages, and then the council need to come in and provide water in those areas through boreholes. Mostly they have done through boreholes because we know that these are the only water sources which we say it's safe for drinking. Our children fail to even go to school because they have to fetch water in faraway places. So we need to make sure our accessibility to water is within range of not more than a kilometer away to lead, to give room and to give time for our children to, to go to school, especially the girl child who has to do a lot of work around our homes. These accounts are merely a fraction of cases of people facing difficulty in accessing water in Masaiti district. By drinking water from the river, from swamps or rainwater, people are exposed to several health risks such as cholera and other diarrheal diseases. It is this that has prompted Senior Chief Chiwala of the Lamba people in Masaiti to call for the government and stakeholders' immediate involvement. The traditional leader expressed the need for every village to have a boho and improved sanitation through initiatives such as the community-led Toto Sanitation Program, which has chiefs at the core of its implementation. This place has become industrialized and as such we need a lot of clean water. And this clean water can only be provided for by the investors themselves, including government where we have some far-flung areas. So we need government to come on board. If we have to meet the 2030 vision, then government has to come in and ensure that each and every district is provided for with borrowers in, in order for people to access clean water as the situation is at now because the population is increasing. Through the Ministry of Local Government's National Rural Water and Sanitation Program to increase and improve rural water supply and sanitation, Masaiti District Council has heeded the calls from the traditional leadership and the people by lining up programs and activities to make water available to the people with major attention given to sinking boreholes. Currently, there are over 480 running bohos in Masaiti against a population of 118,000 people. Despite associated costs of pump, cassings, tank, seating and maintenance, the local authority has rehabilitated at least 15 bohos in the first quarter of 2018 out of the reported 60 that had broken down. But how are the areas picked and considered for a boho? According to the Acting Water and Sanitation Programs Coordinator at the Council, the process begins with the members of the community mobilizing themselves. The community themselves, they need to contribute a certain amount of money, about 1,500. And then that's when we also include them on the list of the areas that are needed for the bohos. Suffice to say that this, uh, this money is not just for, for the benefit of the council or for anyone, but that is just something to show that the, this boho, it's really the community that needed it. Or in short, I'm talking about the ownership of those bohos, that is the community. And that money again is used for rehabilitation whenever the boho breaks down. If there is a problem with the borehole, they will communicate with us and then 
who work together as partners to ensure that the ball will be repaired so that they still have accessibility to water. Similarly, through the full council, civic leaders take a leading role to pass resolutions on where the boreholes are sunk with preference given to health centers, schools and highly populated communities in the district. A notable example is the 10 boreholes that were sourced and donated to the district by Lusaka's Nkoloma Ward Councillor Tasila Lungu, whose sites were selected and endorsed by the full council. Six of these have already been sunk, while the remaining four yet to be drilled during the dry season. This is because the roads to the earmarked sites are impassable during the rainy season. The traditional leadership has since commended the donation from the councillor, who is also President Edgar Lungu's daughter. Uh, there are some companies that, and individuals, organizations that have come on board as well to help us with both church organizations, uh, NGOs, and uh, several others. For instance, there's been some aspects where through some individuals, they've donated the bowels to Masaiti, of which this chief dome is supposed to benefit five of those bowels. Others, I think, have been drilled somewhere else within Masaiti district. Wherever the bowels were put up, we are put up generally after consulting the people, and they've been centrally put up in areas where there was need. <laughs> I am happy that the clinic now has a boho. The maternity didn't have water. We couldn't even wash clothes and linen for the mothers here. So I am very happy today. As people of Molofa village, we are very pleased. We would go very far to get water. We are very privileged and very humbled to have uh, stakeholders coming to donate boreholes in our district. We recently received some uh, boreholes from uh, Tasila Lungu and we're so grateful that we had received these boreholes. And we've sunk these boreholes, although we have sunk six, we are still remaining with four that will be sunk after the rains. Furthermore, there are several other boreholes that have been drilled by private companies, non-government organizations and the government through the Department of Water Resources Development, whose mandate is to promote efficiency and sustainability in the management of both ground and surface water in the district. In addition to boreholes, Kafuwa Water and Sewerage Company is constructing a 450 million United States dollar Kafulafuta Dam project with funding from the government through a loan secured from Exim Bank of China. A lot of investment will be invested in the dam, uh, including the dam itself, the housing, uh, the <coughs> substations. We'll have a lot of uh, infrastructure that will be a belt around that dam and also we know that all of us that a lot of jobs will be created uh, that is direct jobs that will be created through the construction but also indirect jobs will be also be created through the sub-construction of the 20 percent so we want to see uh, that uh, uh, the people of Masaiti benefit from uh, these projects this massive project that is being constructed from job creation uh, also uh, even contractors uh, we should be able to have contractors from Masaiti. Once completed the project will see an improvement in water supply not only in Masaiti district but also in other districts such as Ndola, Luansha and Mpongwe. Kafubu Water and Sewerage Company Planning and Development Manager revealed that not only will the company be able to extract over 300,000 cubic meters of water a day, but the project will also create employment and opportunities for the local people to engage in fish farming, among other ventures. 
the project itself, you know, the Kaflafuta water supply uh, system, uh, has quite a good number of uh, components that is coming with it. Uh, one of uh, the components is uh, a dam construction. So the dam itself, in terms of the, the primary ob objective, is uh, to harness the uh, water. When the dam is done, you know, we will be extracting about 300,000 cubic meters per day. Uh, these, uh, the extraction will save Masaiti where we are. It will improve the service uh, delivery that Kafu is actually saving to the people of Masaiti. These efforts from the government and stakeholders have received commendation from the people and the traditional leadership. <laughs> We are happy that water is now closed. It used to be hard for me such that I was to go two days if the children didn't fetch it for me. So I am grateful God bless. We struggled too much to get water before, but now it's easy and I am very happy. Ninto Telasa na pali boho le sa pale aba kwete ya idea kutureta la boho God bless us whoever came up with the idea of putting up a boho here In the past it was difficult for the pregnant women to access water They would go to the stream or store it in drums but it would have rust which isn't health now I am happy. I just ask government to continue putting up boreholes at other clinics and other health centers like they have done here. Indeed, water remains a chief commodity that stimulates development. Its supply by the government and by those mandated to dispense it, as well as its access by the citizens, will ensure improved standing for the country. Furthermore, to ensure sustainability and efficiency in the management of water resources in the district, it is cardinal to have collaboration among different stakeholders involved. This is because water forms the foundation for all meaningful development. The thing that I want to see as area councillor is that we should form up uh, committees that shall look into uh, the running of the same uh, boreholes. So because if we had to leave them just like this, they may get broken any time. So if there is a committee, uh, that committee will make sure that whatever is happening onto the same ball has to be taken care of the way it should be done. So I would want my members, the communities that are within Shimibanga, to take care of these bores as their own properties. Because if they take care of these bores as their own properties, we will reduce the diarrhea cases that we have that are flooding our, our health center here in Masaiti. We do tell them to take care of this infrastructure let's say dam, dams through formation of dam committees who normally take care of the dam. If there's a leakage, there's erosion, or any activity which would temper with the real development of that uh, infrastructure, they will report so that we work together for continuous provision of that water. As of now, at this day and age, which is the 21st century, we don't expect people to be drinking water uh, in shallow wells, uh, getting water, rain water, and as well as getting water from streams. We need a, a society where our children, where our, our mothers can be able to as access water uh, very easily. Our children, especially the girls, they don't go to school because they have to do those chores of fetching water as well as cleaning up and cooking. But I'm very passionate about our girl children because they have to, to go to school as I did because we need our girls to be in these positions, in these offices. So if we need to do that, we have to make sure that we, we have them access water 
as quickly and as soon as, as possible. So that's my passion as the council chairperson of Masaiti. Access to clean and safe drinking water in Masaiti is slowly but meaningful being realized with all the various efforts by the government, non-government organizations and other public and private stakeholders. This is an apparent benefit to the people who no longer have to endure hardships just to access the commodity. We'll be right back.